have seen dramatic reactions against difference and change. We have seen the growth, the mutations, and the disseminations of conspiracy thinking and theories. It has been theorized that conspiracy theories are not the product of a disordered mind. They're the product of an overly ordered mind. They often speak of a need for order in a disordered world. But invention and creativity take place at what is called the moment of complexity. The dynamic border between disorder, chaos, and order. A transitional state, a liminal state. Certain practices of the self allow us or maybe ease us into an enhanced awareness of this dynamic this heightened place of change. We therefore become more aware, more conversant with disorder, chaos, as a generative force, order as a phase, a static moment in an ever-changing reality. Of these practices of the self, flotation may be the single most easeful and effective way to realize this dynamic, the inherent creativity in change. In the float, we don't just pay attention, we are attention. We witness our impulses, our interiority. This is a wisdom practice. This compels our opening. This helps us understand that too much order, dogma, is a dam. That the somewhat chaotic free flow aspect of the float could be the pre-state of an unbridled creativity where we can embrace change, as an opportunity for possibility and for growth. The Ojibwe people believe that a person can take many forms, the human being one. This is not an idea. It is a matter of what they experience in their world, how they experience in their world, and thereby a lesson in acting in an appropriate manner. The Buddhists might call this right action. This is ethics. This is to live as one dwells in balance. Does not balance require a creative response to change? The embrasure, the embodying of change? In the float, we enter the great calm, beneath thought, beneath image, beneath manifestation. What we experience could be the surface of an even deeper state. Maybe we can call it the tabula rasa of awareness. In the float, we can witness that, maybe we can witness, that we are an empty awareness, that we watch our identity exploring, rehearsing itself in images, thoughts, and memories continuously. This is a profound letting go. The recognition which allows us to continually remake ourselves to embrace change, to adapt, to become creative anew, to become less burdened, to become freer.
In closing, I would like to read an excerpt from the ancient Taoist text that Jang said. You've heard of using wings to fly, but have you heard of using no wings to fly? You've heard of using knowledge to know, but have you heard of using no knowing to know? Gaze into that cloistered calm, that chamber of emptiness where light was born, to rest in stillness is great good fortune. If we don't rest there, we keep pacing around even when we're sitting quietly. Follow sound and sight deep inside and keep the knowing mind outside. This is the deep protean state that we experience in the float. This is the float. This is what you provide. This is what you bring to people. In this way, you become essential to the changes that we so desperately need. To be of service at this magnitude, could there be any greater calling, any greater legacy. So thank you. Thank you.